Good day, great day learners, and welcome back. This is Tumamina teaching. My name is Ngosnati Koki, and you are tuned into your last lesson for term three. So remember, in term two, we looked at the C or J, and the first two lessons of term three, we looked at CPJ. Today, we're going to mix them together in one exercise. So are you up for this task? Let's go. Remember, in a service business, there are two types of cash transactions, the cash receipts and the cash payments. The cash receipts will be recorded in the CRJ or the cash receipts journal, and the cash payments will be recorded in the cash payments journal or the CPJ. So grade eight learners, we are not learning anything new in this lesson. We are going to apply what we've learned already. Let's record all the transactions on the CRJ and CPJ for Break at Brenda for June 2021. Remember, these transactions can be recorded on the CRJ or the CPJ of the business. So we should identify the word in the transaction to identify where this transaction should take place, whether the CRJ or the CPJ. Are you ready? Let's look at the first transaction. On the first, Brenda Bailey deposited 520,000 Rand into the business's current bank account as her capital contribution. Issue receipt number 01 to her. Remember grade eights, golden rule is stop, evaluate, move on. Remember, Brenda Bailey is the owner of Baker Brenda. Can you identify the key word in the transaction that will help us identify where this transaction will be recorded? The word deposited capital contribution and the word receipt all indicate that this transaction should be recorded in the CRJ. Let's take a look at the CRJ. The document number is receipt number 01. The day is the first. The owner Brenda Bailey should be recorded in the details column as she deposited the money into the business's bank account. The money was deposited directly into the business's current account so we will not record anything in the analysis of receipts column. Bank will be recorded with the amount of 520,000 Rand. This transaction should also be recorded in the sundry accounts column as there are no column for capital. The amount of 520,000 Rand will be recorded and the details are capital. Let's run through that transaction once more. Let's move on to the next transaction. On the second, the business paid 17,000 Rand to Arise Properties for rent for the month and paid by EFT number 521. Remember grade eights, the golden rule is stop, evaluate and move on. Again, let's look at the keyword in this transaction. The word paid and paid by EFT indicates that we made a payment which means this transaction should be recorded on the CPJ. Let's have a look at the CPJ for a moment. The document number will be EFT number 521. The day is the 2nd of June. Bank will be recorded with the amount of 17,000 Rand and the sundry accounts will also be recorded with 17,000 Rand. The details will be rent expense. Okay, grade eights, are you ready to do the next transaction on your own? Let's get ready in three, two, one, let's go. On the fifth, cash was received for services rendered according to the cash register roll amounts to 26,800 Rand. Okay, before you go solo, remember, stop, evaluate, move on. Now, in this case, we need to identify the key words in the transaction. You should determine if it's CPJ or CRJ. Did you get it? 
let's have a look. If you're watching this in class and you think that this transaction should be recorded on the CRJ, put up your right hand. If you think this should be recorded on the CPJ, put up your left hand. The key word for this transaction was received and cash register role, which indicates that this transaction will be recorded in the CRJ as the business received money. Let's have a look at the cash receipts journal. The document will be CRR, which is short for cash register role. The day is the 5th. Details will be service rendered, or instead of writing services rendered in the details column, you can also write cash. The analysis of receipt column will be 26,800 Rand. Bank and current income will also be recorded with 26,800 Rand. Let's look at the next example. On the 9th, the business bought a cash register from Brent Traders and paid by EFT number 522 for 14,500 Rand. Remember, stop, evaluate, and move on. The key words in this transaction are bought and paid. So this should be recorded on the CPJ. The document will be 522, the day is the 9th, details will be Brent Traders, bank and sundry accounts column will be recorded with 14,500 Rand, and the details will be equipment. Let's look at that example one more time. Okay, great eight learners, the next one is yours. The owner took cash for personal use for 1,500 Rand. The word took cash and personal use indicates that this transaction should be recorded in the CPJ as the owner, Brenda Bailey, drew money for her own use. Let's look at the CPJ below. The only thing that is different and new to you in this transaction is the document number. The BS stands for bank statement as this money was directly drawn from the bank account. The document will then be a BS. Let's go through this example one more time. We're getting good momentum. Here we go for the next one. On the 26th, the business paid wages cash for 9,000 Rand. All right, stop. So is this in the CPJ or the CRJ? All right, let's go. The word paid will indicate that this transaction will, will be recorded in the CPJ. Let's look at the CPJ below. Again, in this transaction, your document number will be a bank statement as the owner drew money from the bank to pay the wages in cash. Let's go through this example one more time.
your time to try once again. Pay the city council for the water and electricity account with an EFT number 523 for 2,900 rand. So should this be recorded on the CRJ or the CPJ? Let's have a look in three, two, one. You're correct. This transaction will be recorded on the CPJ as we have the word paid by EFT. Okay, we're almost done. Let's go. Bought stationery at NCS stationers and paid by EFT 987 Rand. What's the keyword in this sentence? Paid and bought. So let's look at the cash payments journal below. The document will be number 524. The date is the 30th of June. NCS stationers will be recorded in the details column and bank and the stationery column will be 987 Rand. Now for the last example. On the 31st of June, Baker at Brenda received 15,500 Rand from N. Plakis, who rents part of the building. Issue receipt number two to him. In this transaction, is it a CPJ or CRJ? Yes, that's correct. It should be recorded on the CRJ. How do we know that? That's because we received money. Just a note, this transaction was not recorded as a service delivery. So it's termed as a rent income, not current income. Did your transaction look like this? Okay, I'm gonna help you out now. I'm gonna give you a summary of this whole lesson. I'm gonna start with the summary of the CRJ. Let's go. Only receipts are recorded in this journal. Every transaction is recorded in the analysis of receipts, except when the transaction indicates that the money was deposited directly into the bank. Afterwards, the transaction is analyzed in the relevant column, example, current income, if there is no such column, it is analyzed in the sundry accounts, example, capital or rent income. Each amount is deposited or banked or recorded in the bank column daily. When there is more than one transaction on the same day, the total of all transactions on that specific day is added up and recorded in the bank column. In the journal, provision is always made for sundry accounts because it is not possible to provide a column for each kind of receipt. All right, grade eights, now this is the summary for the CPJ. Only payments are recorded in this journal. Each transaction is recorded in the bank column, i.e. for each EFT reference number, there must be an amount in the bank column. Thereafter, the transaction is analyzed in the specific column for which it is suited. Example, water and stationery. If there is no column for the item, then it is analyzed in the sundry column. Example, drawings and water and electricity. In the journal, provision is always made for the sundry accounts as it is not possible to have a column for each kind of payment. Okay learners, this marks the end of grade eight, term three lessons for EMS financial literacy. By this stage, you should be able to record all transactions on the CPJ and the CRJ. Remember, this is very important for you because this lays the groundwork for your work in grade nine. As you say, as always, if you didn't get the information the first time, just watch the previous lessons again. Thank you for watching this video. See you in term four.
I hope you enjoyed this lesson. These lessons are very costly for us to produce, but we are very determined to keep it free for everyone. We produce these lessons at the rate at which it gets funded. So here are three ways to join hands with us to keep it free for all South African learners. First off, share our resources so that more people can benefit. Secondly, you can add us on my school as a beneficiary. This will help us immensely. Thirdly, we give Section 18A certificates, so your contribution will have a tax benefit. So let's join hands and collaborate for free quality education for all South Africans. Yeah.